Welcome back to the final element in the bench grinder, pedestal grinder, three-part series. The only parts left to do are these little guys right here, the washers that back up the wheel. And, of course, I'm going to make oil cups for it as well. But everything else is complete, and by the end of this video, we should have a functioning little grinder. I don't know if it's going to be hooked up. You know, that's yet to be seen. Let's grab some brass. These are, I believe, a quarter of an inch in diameter. Pop them in the collet. Knock them out. This particular flange has a cylindrical diameter that runs out to a 30 degree flange. Now instead of grinding up a form tool, I'm using a threading tool here because you know half the tool is 30 degrees, so why not use the tools that are available to you? Coordinating your tools allows you to just position them pretty quickly to do whatever you really want to do. And, and that was a partial plunge. That's the overall length of the part, but it's not cut off yet. That allows me to get behind that flange with a form tool, put a nice chamfer on it, make sure it's cosmetically, visually appealing, clean it up a little bit, do the final polish before it falls off. And the only thing you'll need to do at that point is to run it across the memory to remove the parting tool marks on the other side or flatten it out if it's not flat. Blue Magic Polish, paper towel, come in with the final parting tool. Part is done relatively quick. You've also heard me preach in the past knowing the relationship between your primary facing tool and your parting tool is very important. I just came in and that is the final thickness of the part. And for cosmetic reasons, I established the thickness before I put the chamfer on. That way I can control the chamfer to split the part in half. Bulletproof and very efficient process. Come back in with the parting tool, set to the same initial plunge, cut it off. This piece is also done. Two of each. If everything went well, all these pieces should go together without a hitch. Now I have to say that once again I have deviated a little bit from the original print. And let me tell you what I did here. I went with a 256 thread on the end of the main spindle. Because it was easier to single point, I didn't want to run a die on it. So I single pointed it. I made 256. Now in doing that, the hubs in order to maintain some degree of scale with the larger nut needed to be increased as well. So you can see the new, the new hubs are the bigger ones. Center screen right now and these are the original size ones right below it. Same thing with the outer flange. The outer flange is a little bit bigger than the original. So if you go with the 172 on the print this is the size you can expect. That's quarter inch major diameter on these. And that is 5 16 That is only like 1.2 millimeters larger than that one. But it looks like it's a mile. Got a couple of nylon, or excuse me, these are Delrin bushings. These are going to go on the shaft and they're going to go on either side of the protrusions on the casting. So any side to side movement is going to be uh, not metal on metal. The only metal on metal you're going to have is inside the casting here. And I had questions as to whether or not you could bore this out, put a sleeve in it, but yeah, it starts to get kind of thin, so we're just going to pretend that it's got roller bearings in it. Oil cups in the back. 256 threads on those. And yes, they do have a through hole. That's a nice shot of my back of my hand there. There you go, through hole. It's in there, and that is an 028 diameter. That's about a 0.7 millimeter hole through the center. Now right, let's uh, get a decent camera angle, put this thing together, and call it a day. Probably the most efficient place to start is with the spindle, since most everything gets built off the spindle. 
the spindle I tagged one side with a little red dot. The dot serves two purposes. It tells me where the flat is because it's going to be a blind installation. And it tells me which side goes to the left. Now, a lot of you guys left some great comments on the put a notch around the nut. I thought that was a pretty good idea. I've never heard that. If it is a standard, well, I've been kept in the dark over the last 100 million years. So there you take that. have a single Darwin washer. And another one goes on the other side. And doing this without getting in the way of the camera at least once is nearly impossible. Forgive the the intrusion now right now the issue going through is this step right down here on this side is hooked on that little washer so we've got to get that lined up just right and it should slip right through And yes, a small lead on the shaft would be good, but it's minimal land when it assembles, so I opted not to do that. There we go. Boom. Gonna look for the red mark. I'm gonna line up the set screw with the red mark. Set screw on the barrel. And drive in a little bit. There we go. Okay, I would say we're trapped in there. I'm not going to tighten it down just yet. Here we go. Keep rocking. One bushing goes on the other side. Over the 125 shaft. Make a larger cup. I think the scale is acceptable. There's about two thousandths worth of end slop in this, and I want to make sure it stays that way.
tool posts one at a time. Now, for sake of not damaging those at a later date, let's back this thing up and put it on the base right now. I'm definitely going to have to speed this up in a minute. That is all she wrote. I will take a Q-tip and I will get that red mark off of there. And the red mark that's on the shaft underneath that oil cup is going to bug me forever. But you know what? It's going to just have to stay there. I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed building it because I'm sure having fun doing this. This is a test of your nerves, your patience, your steadiness, and your eyesight. There is a lot of fun. Okay, that's all I got on this one, guys. This is a wrap. The additions to this model outside the instructions were the larger flanges on either side of the wheel, the Delrin bushings on either side of the barrel pulley, which means the cut in the casting was bigger to allow for the thickness of those little spacers. Uh, the 256 nuts as opposed to the 172, the oil caps, and the cap for the cap. Look at that. How cool is that? I can't even grab a hold of it. I'm shaking like a leaf right now. Anyway, there it is. Thank you very much for watching. Hope everybody's well and happy wherever you are in the world. Joel Pazinski here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.